Hello and welcome to the Matrix Talk. I'm Oleg Fixel and here are some facts about me. Um, I also used to work as a security consultant some years ago and I am uh, already many years in the Matrix community. Uh, today I will give you an overview of our Matrix architecture and ecosystem and help you with the first steps in the Matrix world. So, uh, what is Matrix or how Matrix come about? Uh, there are many chat networks out there and most of the time they are isolated from each other. Uh, the idea of Matrix is to unite them. But don't get me wrong, Matrix is not a huge bridge just uh, for uniting some other networks. Uh, it's also a completely independent network on its own. The difference is Matrix is friendly to other networks. So I think uh, the following sentence describes Matrix very well. Uh, if we say open network, that means open specification and open implementation. Uh, secure means uh, Matrix has end-to-end -end encryption uh, by default. And decentralized means uh, that anyone can run their own Matrix server. And of course, uh, nowadays we talked about, talk about real-time communication and most of the time we mean uh, chat rooms. Uh, Matrix can also be used in, for a variety of cases uh, 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 for real-time communication, IoT for example. So, uh, let's look at some of the key features uh, that I personally like about Matrix. Well, OpenSpec um, means that the protocol is open. The implementation is open as well. So you can take the protocol spec and write your own uh, home server or write your own client for Matrix. Um, Matrix is distributed and federated network. This means uh, all of our messages are not stored on one server, but spread across the network. And you, as a home server owner, maybe can also choose which, uh, which home servers you federate. Um, this, this has um, much benefits uh, to the central networks. So end-to-end -end encryption um, is there by default and built in from ground up in the spec and not bolted on, on top at some uh, later time. And uh, this is very important from the architectural point of view. Um, uh, we can also use WebRTC calls, uh, voice and video calls in, in Matrix, and those are encrypted as well. So we get this uh, as well. And um, I think the most unique feature of Matrix is bridging, which I, I showed you bridges the other network into the Matrix. So you don't have to install 10 clients on, on your device to communicate to, to 10 different networks. So integrations are also cool. I will show you a couple of, um, a couple of screenshots from integrations. And last but not least, healthy and friendly community from my point of view, which is very important. So end-to-end um, -end encryption. Um, from my point of view as a security expert, um, encryption without open source um, is questionable. Uh, you can, of course, um, trust the, uh, the, the, the company or the, the project saying you, we are encrypting that, uh, but uh, you cannot see in the source how it's done. Well, Matrix encryption is open source. Um, because Matrix replicates uh, the messages across uh, the home servers, if the messages in this uh, chat room are um, sensitive data, uh, without end-to-end -end encryption, it could be um, a privacy problem. That's why end-to-end -end encryption in Matrix is a first. Uh, f it's, it's very important. Uh, and that's why Matrix took some time uh, to build this encryption. 
and actually much more time <laughs> to actually create a user interface with all the possible scenarios for the user uh, to use this encryption. So keep in mind, if you're building an, a, a crypto, building a crypto is one thing, but making it usable for people and easy to use is a, a, a bit different job. And it's, yeah, takes some more times. Well, the encryption is used about three years already. And those are actually two libraries or two implementations. OLM is a double ratchet implementation based on the signal specification, which signal use, and the completely new, uh, which called MegOLM uh, for group chats. There's, there was also a security assessment in 2016. Uh, there were some findings um, which were fixed. If you're a security researcher, Take a look at it and give us feedback. So let's look at the distributed architecture of Batrex. We have different entities. Um, home server is one of them. On the home server, we have user clients which connect to the home server and have them uh, have accounts there. Home server are communicating to each other using server-to-server -server API and exchange messages in real time. So there are also identity server and um, identity server, uh, you can use a central identity server hosted by matrix.org uh, uh, or you can use, uh, you can deploy your own identity server uh, if you want to federate with, with your uh, company's identity provider. Uh, the discovery of home servers and identity servers is done either by DNS server records or um, home server can also use this well-known uh, URI schema to, um, to know which home server is responsible for this domain. Very similar that we have in the email world right now. And there are also application server. Application server are a bit different. They connect to the home server uh, using uh, an application server API and uh, have uh, more, um, more rights than uh, the clients have. Uh, most of the time, application server are bridges, uh, but sometimes they are also integration manager. We will talk about both uh, in a minute. So let's talk about home servers. Uh, there is a home server API. In very brief, uh, it synchronizes the messages between the home server and it can also ask for uh, historic messages. Uh, for example, if the home server was offline for some, uh, some while, uh, it can ask for messages in the last two days to catch up. And it also can uh, ask the profiles um, uh, of the users on this home server to, to, to show this user is offline or this user is online. There are different implementations of home servers. Uh, Synapse, probably the most prominent one, is the most stable one, which is used on matrix.org. And uh, there is also a next generation home server uh, written in Golang, which should be uh, which is aimed to be very scalable and very performant, which is actually entering beta now. So, um, uh, and there are also some uh, community servers uh, which are developed by the community. Conduit, for example, is uh, the home server in Rust, currently in alpha state. Uh, currently, it doesn't support, I think, the, um, the federation between the servers, so it's your only on your server, but it's blazingly fast currently. So, and there's also construct in C++, which also performance oriented. Uh, but there are more. Uh, by the way, in the blue, there are links. You can download the slides and click the links. Uh, you can click the links and see all the home servers which are uh, currently uh, being developed for Matrix. So let's look at the clients. So, and the client server API uh, was developed to be really user friendly as possible. So, you can develop a client uh, very easily. And you can actually use the client server API from your curl command like this and uh, just 
send a message to the room using your command line. You will get an event ID, so you can refer to this message, or maybe deleting it or replying to it. Uh, and this looks uh, then in the real uh, UI client, something like this. Uh, there are also um, fancy clients. Yeah? Element is the, yeah, the reference client which implements most of the features or all the features which uh, Matrix has. Uh, it is available as a web app, a desktop app using Electron or mobile app for Android or iOS. But there are, of course, uh, other mobile apps. So we have, uh, we see here uh, Element, uh, Dito Chat, Paddle, Fluffy Chat, Neo, different kinds of, with different feature sets developed by the community. And there are also some desktop clients as well. Um, all of this, like native clients. Uh, all of the clients have different feature sets and different maturity level. So take a look on the feature list uh, before you choose a client or just try out. And of course, for console gigs, there are also terminal UI clients. And a matter of fact, I will briefly show you GoMux in the demo, which is console client. So let's go on. Let's uh, look at the application server. And the application server API um, have, as I said, privileged access to the server. This is needed that the application server uh, for example, if it's a bridge to other network, it needs to hook into the server's events and logic, and it needs to masquerade the users from the other networks in in Matrix uh, to 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 get this uh, native experience. So you will have in Matrix those virtual users, uh, which will look like uh, they were a Matrix users, but they are actually on I don't know Telegram or WhatsApp. Yeah. So, um, also, uh, application server can be an integration server. So, what is an integration server? I will give you a couple of examples. Uh, so, for example, you can uh, embed some widget in the room using the integration server. And on this example, you have Etherpad in the room. Uh, so, everyone who is in the room can see it and see the same, the same uh, content. Uh, there are also some bots, uh, here an example with RSS bot, it will look at the RSS feed and new entries will be posted in the room. Uh, Grafana is also a good example if you have some monitoring ops room yeah, where, we have, uh, where you have graphs and everyone who is in the room looks at the same graph and talks about the same things. So also Jitsi integration is possible. Here in this screenshot, Matthew, the founder of Matrix, uh, shows Jitsi integration. Uh, I see the screenshots it a bit old already. Uh, and there is also possible to use custom integrations, something like iframe, something like, like a, a, just a, a page integrate in, in, this, in this iframe. So very cool. Uh, let's talk about bridges. Bridges are also application server, and from my point of view, it's a, it's a unique feature of Matrix to unite networks together. Um, so you don't have to install multiple clients for every network. You just use bridge, and it's all in Matrix in your client. It's all synchronized over your multiple devices. Um, let's look how it works. Uh, on this example, on the right side, uh, we have the, uh, the matrix world, the home servers and the users on them. And one home server has this bridge connected to it using client server API. And the uh, home server connects to the bridge using application server API on one side of the bridge. On the other side of the bridge, bridge connects to the other network, in this case IRC, using some TCP protocol or some XML or uh, whatever, yeah, and bridges the messages in two directions. So um, if you will start with bridges, you will probably hear um, there are some different types of bridges. And very briefly, uh, there are bridge bot bridges and there are puppeted bridges. Um, as we can he see here on the example, on the right side we have Telegram, on the left side we have Matrix, and the first message on the Telegram 
is a puppeted uh, uh, message. That means in Telegram, you see this message as a native message. So the guys in Telegram uh, cannot notice if you are using actually Telegram or if you are using Matrix and Bridge. So puppeted bridges uh, create this virtual user or use this, this native users also on the Matrix side. Uh, so you have this, this seamless experience from both sides. Uh, sometimes it isn't possible to use um, uh, to use puppets uh, in, in, in the network. Maybe network doesn't support, maybe you don't have enough rights, uh, maybe the person have no account in this network. And that, uh, as a fallback, you can use BridgeBot, which actually one user, as we see in, 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 in later messages on the Telegram side, one user uh, sends the, um, the messages uh, for each individual user from Matrix, but it's one user. It depends, of course, the user name in the message, uh, but it's still one user on the Telegram side. So sometimes it is possible to use puppeted, sometimes it isn't, and that's why we have this um, um, two uh, bridge types. So um, who is using Matrix? Uh, for the last couple of years, I would say adoption grows rapidly. And um, I, we see some governments start using um, Matrix. Uh, actually, the French government already rolled out Matrix. And there are currently three more governments piloting Matrix. Um, there are some open source communities um, using Matrix. Um, Mozilla is probably the most prominent one. University and uh, virtual conferences are using Matrix as well. And there are also many uh, official channels on matrix.org for uh, some open source projects. So let's say you want to start with Matrix. Um, I will give you four simple steps you can um, start with Matrix. So first step is to choose your home server. Um, I've set up a test server. Uh, where you can log in, register yourself, and just use it. It will be running for a couple of weeks. Uh, no uh, email or uh, telephone number needed to sign up. Just you can use it and uh, um, just explore. Um, uh, of course, there are also a list of public matrix servers you can use to connect and to like um, yeah to use them. And there is also a possibility to register yourself on, on matrix.org. Um, actually, matrix.org grown pretty, pretty big right now. And this is distributed network. Uh, so I suggest you, um, you use matrix.org really as a last resort uh, because we want to spread, uh, spread the load in the network to the other home servers. So use the official section of the public matrix server, uh, see which server suits your needs and use it maybe. Uh, you also can uh, host your, let host your server by some hosting provider. Uh, matrix.org or elements matrix services uh, uh, can offer you for some money to host uh, your home server for you if you may be a company like Mozilla does and uh, there are also other hosters in the link uh, which can uh, help you host your server for some money or you can do as I do you can host your server your, yourself uh, there are some guides to do that. Um, I've used the uh, incredible Ansible playbook, which deploys the server, the element UI, uh, web UI client, some bridges, some bots. Very cool. If, you, if, if, it's, uh, if it's for you, take a look at it. There are also some um, uh, Kubernetes charts uh, available. We are currently uh, working on uh, improving them and maybe getting them to the state of Ansible playbook where you can uh, deploy uh, many things in there, not just a home server, but also bridges and bots in there. If you are experienced with Kubernetes and Helm charts, come on and help us. 
And uh, then if you have a home server, you can choose your client. You've seen also uh, some client list I've shown, um, but also in the link there is a list of the clients. And then you are good to go. Join us at this channel, talk about your experiences, ask questions. And uh, if you want to get involved, there's a link how you can help the community um, to grow. So let's sum it up. The number of messaging platforms grows every day. Uh, so you are kind of forced uh, to, um, to, to install every client for every platform. What Matrix solved this problem by uniting these platforms the way you want it. And um, Matrix community is growing rapidly for the last couple of years. As a matter of fact, Gitter joined, joined the community a couple of weeks ago and Gitter and Matrix will uh, join the networks. Uh, currently there's a link, you can read about it more. Uh, the community is great. It's it's funny. It's it's very cool. I um, it's very friendly. Uh, so get involved. So now let's uh, go to the terminal and uh, see the demo. So let's start by deploying the home server first. We have the Ansible playbook which will deploy the home server and uh, bridges and also element. Uh, the configuration is done via vars YAML. I'm using a Docker container uh, to run Ansible here. So now we are in the Docker container and uh, we will run Ansible playbook, which will um, set up and deploy uh, all the components. So now we will speed it up a bit, so we don't wait. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on uh, your virtual machine you are deploying to. So now we will start the services. And it will again take a bit time. And now we are done. What we can do now, we can log in into our uh, newly deployed home server using also a deployed version of uh, Element client, the web client. So we will we'll create um, a new account here, specify password, and also do some capture. We don't have to specify any email or telephone number to sign up here, only username and password. So now we are in our newly created server and we can join some rooms. We can use it either uh, by uh, using the command line or like the, the chat input, or we can use uh, the UI by clicking the plus on the left side. Let's join some room and say hello. So let's try uh, some other client, uh, for example, GoMooks uh, console client. So we enter our username and password and the home server address that we want to log into. And then it um, fetches the information from the server and synchronizes the chat rooms. We can also use a mouse for navigation here. So let's look how we can use a bridge. In this case, we will be using a Telegram bridge. Uh, to be able to control the bridge, I will create a, a direct chat to the bridge bot, which will be instructing the bridge um, to yeah, do the bridging. So creating a direct chat. And uh, here we go, we, have, uh, we can type help and uh, use a login command to log into the Telegram. So after we type the login command, we will get a message, an SMS on our, the telephone, or we pass the telephone number here and get a message, uh, or we can uh, log in using uh, the web UI, like the web page. And as soon as we do it, the bridge will be creating portal rooms, which will be the rooms bridged to the, your rooms in Telegram. Now let's look at the IRC bridge. 
Now on the right side we have an IRC client and we'll, we will join uh, some channel on IRC. On the left side we have our matrix um, and we will create a direct chat again to the bridge bot, the IRC bridge. And uh, now we will execute the command uh, to the bridge bot that we want to join this channel. We will be invited to this portal room which will be bridged to the channel on IRC. And if we type hello IRC, we'll see, we'll get it on the IRC side. Now bridging works in both directions and we can use a matrix to chat in IRC. So now let's bridge two rooms using the integration manager. Uh, it will use the bridge hosted by matrix.org. For that, we need to create a new room. We will uh, make this room public. For that, we first need to create um, a room address and also add permissions so anyone can join. This will be the bridge bot uh, we, we, who will be joining. So we use Freenode as a, as a network and we specify the operator of this um, channel on Freenode. Now we get a direct message on IRC side asking if this room can be used. And if we answer yes, and we are operator of this room, the room will be bridged. Now the messages are bridged on both sides and we can invite someone else to the room and those messages would be bridged as well. Let's invite our test user. And we see the messages of our test user are bridged as well. And more, we can also use bots on Matrix side and control those bots uh, from uh, the IRC side or the other way around. Let's try it out using our reminder bot, which is also deployed uh, by the Ansible playbook. Let's set up a notification in one minute. I will speed up the recording so we don't have to wait one minute. Here is the reminder from the bot, which is bridged to IRC. And that sums up the IRC part. Let's take a look at Slack bridge. So on the right side, we have Slack. On the left side, we have Matrix. Uh, on the Slack side, we will create a new channel and also on the left side in Matrix, we will create a new channel and we will bridge those two channels. So let's create on the channel on the Matrix side as well. And we will be using again integrations. That's why we need to make the channel public again create an address, make it public, and we will use integrations to bridge it to Slack. Just click the Slack. A pop-up window will authenticate to Slack, and this way the room will be bridged. So let's check again. Oh yeah, uh, we have to invite the um, Slack bridge to the Slack um, channel as well. Now we see we can list the channels and we can bridge the channel by clicking on it. That's it, the channel is bridged.
Yay! And we see reactions work as well. We can also invite the test user and the messages from the test user will be bridged to Slack as well. So, this concludes the demo and let's get back to the slides. So, again, uh, you can use the test server I've set up. No email, and password, uh, no email or telephone number is needed to register. Uh, server will be running for a couple of weeks. Uh, try it out, give me feedback. And that's all. Thanks for watching the talk and see you in Matrix. Bye-bye.